people got Merry Friday. Y'all come on in. Stay beautiful, people. I pray everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful, marvelous Friday. I pray, pray that everything is going well for you. Staying safe and staying safe. Staying in your right frame of mind. Just staying as positive as you possibly can be. Um, just doing big things. God is still amazing. He's an awesome God. This song popped up. I was like, that is a, I never, I remember this song. No. Oh, both say, I remember this song. I remember. If we do not own the rights to the music that is playing, of course y'all know it. We love it. It's for recreational purposes. It's for something we just love to do. Love some good music. But this is um, Ricky Dillard, Awesome God. If you want to go back and listen to it again. Uh, but I want to make sure that y'all know who is the singing this particular song just in case you never heard it before or you heard it and you didn't know who sung it it's uh ricky dillard awesome god but i again i pray y'all are having a great day but we thank the lord for allowing us together here today and to be able to talk and be in our right frame of mind the way that he has us thanking him for allowing us to wake up today start us on our way give us all the activities of our limbs showing us a brand new day that wasn't promised to neither one of us we not good enough to to where god can't you know we feel like we're too good to fit for anything bad to happen to us or for us to go through uh no no don't ever feel like you're too good for something like that um god is still good to you don't over, don't think that he got to do things, he better. Don't have that mentality. Because um, he's been way too good to you and think outside of that. Um, thinking that that's the way things have to always be going your way. But we're grateful to God for what he's doing, what he's getting ready to do, how he's getting ready just to continue to provide for us and keep us. And hold on to us and make sure that we are still good. There is no... Up until this point, since we don't depend, I mean, this uh, virus has been out there. You have still been covered by the blood of Jesus. He's been taking care of you. You ain't been wanting for anything. You ain't been suffering from anything. That's a blessing. He's an awesome God. <laughs> He's an awesome God because you ain't wanted for nothing. You have never went lacking. Your, your bills is still getting paid. You still got food in the refrigerator. You still got a roof over your head. You ain't, you not in, in need of anything. Hey, lady, how are you? How are y'all? God's day, whispers. Listen, he's an awesome God, okay? If you don't know he's an awesome God, look around you. See how blessed you are. Or go to the hospital and then look at them and see where they, somebody's laying up in the hospital, wishing they were in the state of mind that you were in. Just saying, think about that when you talk, when you don't know if you blessed or not. You don't know if God is awesome to you or not. Go look around. Somebody is in a worse uh, situation or predicament is what I want to say. Then you are. Um, God's Day Whisper for anybody that's just showing on. But uh, I'm, not, I'm going this way, so you can go on across the street. <laughs> um, but with God, the type of awesome God that we serve, he takes He take care of us each and every day. Even when we feel like we ain't got enough and he ain't done enough for us. Think about somebody else that is going through. They don't, they stand with somebody or in need of something and they can't get it. They don't have the resources. They don't have the, the help. And you got everything you need. You And you complaining because you don't feel like it's enough. Come on. And some people don't even have that look. What you got, they don't even have. 
So don't ever always think that you always the one that have to be, oh, it's the woe is me person. No, it's some people out here with some real, some real life struggles. And if you only knew the struggles that they have to deal with, you just like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know you was going through that. They don't look like it. They don't look like they going through something, but they are going through some stuff. Um, and they might not talk about it. Or they might not tell it because they don't want, um, they don't they don't want people to bring nobody else down or whatever but it's all fine and good but you have to look at it and say hey you know some people just have um they go through so many different things and they don't have to tell everything that's going on with them they make you look good um but what i'm saying is don't complain about things you have and there's some people have way less than you and you feel like it's not enough or i don't have it all i don't they, the lord ain't blessed me with all of that he got you with something though you breathing on your own you ain't on no ventilator listen you not suffering trying to find trying to gas for air come on listen there's little things that people that that's a big thing to me because there's some people gasping for air they trying to figure out where their next breath is coming from and you breathing and still complaining because you don't have enough money listen folks trying to find enough breath enough air to, to use to breathe to stay here and you up here worried about something else that don't even mean no good. It's just something, it's just things like that that people just miss. They miss because they always feel like I got to have more. I got to have some more. I need, that's not enough. I got to have more. But you ain't looking at the little things that folks that, that, that's really struggling. They living day by day, struggling day by day. And they have to live life like that. You already, you already got your life planned out when you, when you retire. Some people thinking about what they gonna do tomorrow, what they gonna do tonight, where they sleeping at tonight, where they where they, where they gonna get their next meal that they they probably didn't even eat today. So they trying to space out the food they have. They missing meals, trying to eat, and you got a refrigerator full of food, or you can go somewhere and eat. Somebody will invite you over for dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you complaining. Listen. I'm just saying, think about it when you complain. You just like somebody is out there just not don't even have a meal. And we throw away so much food and we won't give it to nobody because we don't, you know, it is what it is. But you know, complaining, what you complaining for? People out here struggling. They out here trying to make it. God is still good to them. They not like again, a lot of people know how to make it look good. A lot of people know how to make it work. They they doing what they got to do to make things happen. And we complaining, we got we got a lot, but we don't feel like it's enough. You just have to look back and say, you got four refrigerators. They all got food in it. Four of them. And you still complaining. Come on. You got 18 rooms, and you still complaining. Somebody don't even have a blanket. It's cool. It's cold outside. It's been cold. Well, you know, I ain't really been outside, so it's <laughs> today, really. <laughs> but... You got people out here that's really struggling and going through and we complaining about things that we don't even we don't need we just want them but we see somebody else with it and we feel like we should be blessed with it too in due time if it's for you it's for you if that's the season god has you in it's for you it'll be for you not because you see somebody else with it that's their blessing that's their season that's their time to have it not for you i don't understand i don't miss driving i don't i don't miss driving so I'm going to have to relearn all these uh, roads and because <laughs> I do not, I don't miss driving. Like people may ask, you know, yeah, I don't miss it. This is not a fan of mine. I, I, I don't care. To, but anyway, um, but just don't complain about things like that. When you, like I said, think about it. You think about people in nursing homes, a lot of people that I, um, have talked to since this pandemic has happened were not able to talk to or see I won't necessarily say talk but they were never they were not allowed to go and visit their loved ones that were in nursing homes and all they can do is see them through uh, FaceTime or iPad or you know whatever or uh, video chat or whatever they were not allowed to actually visit them and if that's something that was a part of their day you don't know how it changes the person that has to go and see them their day because it could be somebody that's very close to them a, a spouse or a, a mama or whatever and you being apart from your parent for you know four or five months at a time and you on a restricted um viewing you you can only go in and see your loved one when they allow you to um 
kind of it it gets to you so that's why i said a lot of struggle especially if you used to hey i go and check on my mama 24 7 or eight hours you know out of eight hours i'm up there at least four and or i'm going up there just popping up just to make sure my 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 people are good and with this happening that takes a toll on some people that don't realize how how stressful that is and that's to the person that is coming to see them we're not even talking about the person that's coming that's being seen um so it's a lot of things that that people don't realize and that's why i said we're complaining we're bickering and we're fighting and we're shooting and we we got to get the last say be the last one and we got to get revenge and all of that and you got people out here just living they don't live their life or they live in their life and they just some, some things just happen it's causing them to go in a different way and they happen to make decisions for their family members and we are here fighting and complaining and it is it's senseless it's crazy but we think about it after it's done if i could have resolved this if this could have i could have i could have done something about this if i could have um why i didn't think about that further because we we go straight to anger before we go we think about the deeper issue it don't it's not necessarily that's why i say all the time it's not a reason to pop off or always have something to to say or to be the first one to say i'm gonna get you before you get me i'm gonna i'm gonna gonna put you out there before you put me out there i'm gonna and that's not do you actually win you don't actually win when you're doing that if you're the person that always got to be oh okay because i know them they're gonna put some stuff out there about me so let me beat them to the punch do you actually win? Because now you're just like that person that you assuming is going to put you out there. You're just like them. Are you really winning? Or is it really a, a, a <laughs> is it really something that you have, uh, you decided that you're going to win off of? How do you win? I want to know who the referee is. <laughs> I want to know who, who decides that you won that battle. Um, because now you're acting like that person. So where is your growth that you had? That where you grew out of going back and forth, bickering and arguing with people, or are you trying to put somebody's screenshot and everything and putting all their their dirty laundry out there for everybody to see? Do you? Um, how do you know you winning? Do do you win? Um, and then if you have grown from that, what resulted you to go back to that? Did you actually grow? Or is that something you just wanted to tell people and you just showed them a little side of you? I told you eventually the real you will come out. You can fake and be somebody else as long as you want to. Eventually, because it's in you, it's going to come out of you. So whatever is really in your heart or whatever is your, um, really you, your personality or whatever, it's going to actually come out. So while we're mistreating and hurting folks and feeling like we got to get revenge and do dirt, I'm going to get you. I don't care what you say. When I see you, I'm going to get you. Run up. All this other kind of stuff. Be clapping and all this other kind of stuff. Trying to um, get at somebody. We think about somebody else that's just saying, I got to make a decision. If I got to pull a plug on my on my loved one, do I have to make the decision on, on if... Um, do I have to... Because I can't afford to live in the place that I'm living in now. What do I do? Do I move? Do I try to get a roommate? Do you you don't trust nobody? You don't. It's a lot of things that people are deciding in life, but we're fighting, we're angry with people, and we're going through some uh, like some serious issues. But at the same time, we're 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 wanting to hurt somebody, but deep down you hurting, but you don't even know how to deal with your hurt because you're so busy on hurting somebody. Find out what's hurting you so you won't continue to hurt somebody else or do something to somebody else. Sometimes we forget that, you know, we're, we're, we call ourselves being the wounded one, <laughs> the one that's hurt, the one that's always being portrayed. Are you really? Do you even look at yourself? Again, self-evaluation. Look at yourself and realize, okay, I had this. How many friends would I have had if I had done this, that, and the third, what it, what could I have changed? And I could have had so many people in my corner. I could have had so many folks to, to support me in, in my business or support me in my ministry or support me in my whatever. But look how many people have passed through me or went through me or stop fooling with me, stop calling me, stop texting me. Look how many people I can go through my phone and um, look and see how... Make sure you sit, baby. Your lane run out. What you gonna do? Um, 
that you're going to see um, when you go through all of that and you see your, 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 the people in your phone and you're just like, oh, I don't talk to them no more. I don't see them no more. You see them on Facebook or social media. You're just like, I wonder how they're doing. I wonder if they, and, and you're trying to figure out, but you, you have to say, well, what have I done wrong? What have I done to people? Because everybody is not running away from me or stop fooling with me or stop calling me just out of the blue. What did I do? What am I causing where people are just suddenly turning their backs on me and they don't want to be around me? I keep going through this, so now I need to check me. Because I'm out here trying to check everybody else and put everybody else on the straight and narrow, but I need to figure out what's wrong with me. I can't hold down a relationship. I can't keep nobody. Nobody want to keep me. <laughs> so I need to find out what's going on. How do I handle how do I handle this? Because now I'm going, I, I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I'm, I do need people. I do need somebody to assist me um, with with a lot of things, but I can't find that help because my name is already tossed out there that this is the type of person that I am. And we don't want to do that because we feel like we're always right. That it have to go the way that we say it's got to go. And this is the way it's going to have to be. And there ain't no change in that. And it is what it is. But at the same time, um, Deep down, you do need to look within yourself and find out how can you change you? How can you make sure that you're, um, to get you, because sometimes it, it, it be mental, you know, you run into some people, you just like, mm -mm, that's out of my pay grade. I can't, <laughs> I can't do nothing about that one. That's, that's beyond my pay grade. That's out of the norm for me. Um, uh, I, mm -mm. Yeah, I have to find somebody that don't went to school, like deep down in some schooling for that, because that's beyond <laughs> my pay grade. But um, you still have it to where people, um, it is, it can be still a mental issue, and we just have to recognize that. And um, let's correct those things. That All this stuff can be corrected. It can be fixed. And I know a lot of times, because I told y'all when I was on that symposium a couple of weeks ago, they were discussing, um, they, people, you know, a lot of psychologists or doctors or whatever like to give you medication. And, hey, lady, how are you? I'm just now seeing y'all. Uh, amen, Miss Felicia. I don't know what you said amen to, but amen. <laughs> But you got a lot of people out here that does not want to recognize their mental issues. Or you have doctors and stuff that want to just prescribe you medication and just keep you filled and all whacked out on all kinds of stuff. And you um, that's not the answer to... Let me just tell you, I don't miss driving. Let me say that one more time. I do not miss driving. Okay? That, that, my job could have just left me at the house. <laughs> I do not miss driving at all. But anyway, um, yeah, I, yeah, I got, yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone. So, you got a, you got a lot of, a lot of doctors and stuff, and a young lady that was, that spoke on it, she said a lot of kids, they want to just prescribe them pills to make them calm down because they think that's really the issue is that they're just hyper or this is that but they don't talk to the kids and find out what's deeper what's going on instead of filling up with medication even grown folks instead of filling up with medication you don't know what has happened grown people can get hurt too where they can feel you know uh some type of way about certain things but instead of just giving you medication or whatever but a lot of times we we feel like going to a psychologist is um, you know, black people don't go to psychology. You go wherever you need help. Whoever is to help you. God say, whispers, whoever just showing on, God say. Um, but whoever is in need of it, because I'm telling y'all, mental illness is real. A lot of things that's going on now in our in news and everywhere else. I'm not a news watcher. I don't, I don't watch the news because, you know, I'm my own news. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, it's a lot of times when you look back at you, you just say what when you see people when they post they just like what is wrong with them what's wrong with this world what's wrong with them you just like y'all don't even know it y'all don't you don't see if you read between lines on a lot of stuff if you pay attention to posts you can read you can read in between lines and find out what was what was happening before it even happened or after the fact you could just look and you say you can see that coming up look at how the person you know how they people people watch your body language and folks always say you know why did, your body language says a lot i can read in between messages or whatever and you can see 
me make sure you see me uh, a little claw. Um, I can see, I can pretty much read in between what that person was saying or what they were, you know, before it got to that point. And then you just listen to people talk. I told you I'm a people person, and my husband got me on that on that um, bandwagon of words. Word, I call it word games. He breaks down words, and you just be like, did nobody even get that from there? Well, that's what you said when you say, you know. And then you just like, so I'm more of that type of person to not only pay attention to what people say or the word game, as I call it, but I pay attention to, you know, how you saying it. And all of that means a lot, and you can get a lot from it. It's just like, yeah, you can tell that when, you know, <laughs> most of the time, all you have to do is just listen to somebody. You don't even have to say a word. They'll tell everything that needs to be said or needs to, for you to know just by them having a conversation with you. But it's up to you to take out what you see. But I'm back to the mental illness part. I don't have, like, what I see. You know, you just like, yeah. And we think, well, if you go to a psychiatrist, that means you're crazy. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to say I'm crazy. It does not mean that you're crazy. It just means you just need some help. And everybody around you can't help you with the help that you need. That's it. It's okay to say, I need some help. I need some assistance. I need somebody to, to, to uh, get me to this point because this is where I'm trying to go. But something keep holding me back. It could be mental illness. It could be health issues. It could be something else. It could be something that happened in your past. It could be any of those things that causes you not to be, you know, in the um, right frame of mind or things to change for you. But us as um, people, we always think when somebody says, you're going to go see a psych or you're going to go, that, that means that you're, you know, you're crazy. And it does not mean that. It does not mean that. You, when you think about it, psychologists, they actually... Um, give you another, if you watch all these shows, well, I watch a lot of those, those different shows and stuff. When you watch a lot of those shows, they, um, the psychologists kind of give you another way of looking at stuff. You just be like, hmm, I didn't think about that. When you, when you watch shows, they, they have a psychologist or whatever, they, then they give them a answer to whatever. It's like, how about this? How about you? Or they'll ask a certain question and then it's just like, I didn't even think about that. See, you, you study listening to the same people or you study going around the same time. So you used to the same answer. Go to somebody else that's mutual, don't even have uh, stock in, neither, in nobody and go for that help. You don't know where that help is needed at and that makes you become a better person. You can be a better lover, a better wife or spouse or whatever, a better friend. It does not make you out to be crazy and that you just, you it's something wrong with you, you crazy. No, it does not mean that. That just means that you're willing to open up to get receive more and to be a better person and to be to be out here because it, it's like again everybody in your household can't resolve your what your deeper issue is because they trying to figure it's like there's something wrong with you and it doesn't mean that you need medication it just mean that you just need somebody to give you a different outlook you just like okay let me try it that way because we're it's just like anger management everybody don't know everything about anger because like i said a few minutes ago everybody go when they get mad something don't go that way that's the first thing we do we get mad we get angry we're ready for revenge we're ready to do something we're ready to fight and that does not mean you you ready to get so anger management they help you. So why is it okay to go to anger management but not to go and talk to a psychologist? You think they not helping you with the anger management class? I'm just asking the question. Maybe it's just me. I'm just asking the question. Maybe I don't, I don't know what the else is. So I'm just saying some, sometimes we we afraid to, to step out there and, and um, put ourselves out there as we recognize that we need assistance, that we need help. And it's not just about mental Ill, illness or or health or anything. It's about anything. It's okay to ask for help. You know, to to I'm one of them kind. I try to do everything. Like I, when I'm doing something, folks be like, "You trying to do?" I do all that because I feel like if I just go ahead and do it and get it done, it's okay. Because folks at church be like, "You know, we could have helped you with that." No, it's just like, yeah. But it's just in my mind, I'm just like, I just want to do it to go on and get it over with. It's it's nothing. It's not like I don't trust you to do it. It's just I don't know. I just don't do it. But when it comes down to a certain thing, you be like, oh, yeah, you can do that. You got it. You sure do. Go ahead. I support you from over here. But it's okay to ask for some help, especially if you see that you really need it. Or especially if you get to a point to where you think something dangerous is going to happen to you or to um, you endangering someone else. 
So we, um, so again, it does not hurt you to ask for assistance or to find that assistance. I told you I got that, and I was intending to post it the other day. Um, the hotline number. I have not tried the numbers on there to see if they actually work, but there is a lot of different numbers on there um, as far as like if you want to get information on like HIV. Um, it's like an HIV hotline. What it consists of, I'm not sure. But um, mental illness, there's a lot of numbers that's on there. And that information um, can help somebody. So I'll post that. And hopefully I can remember to have it posted this today. Um, that people may need it. And again, don't put it as, as, you know, I don't want nobody to think that I'm crazy or anything like that. Don't put it as to uh, black people or certain colored people don't, you know, certain nationalities just do not, they don't go to, the, they don't do that. They don't do this. Well, you, you never know. And that's why I say a lot of times, yo, you can get a lot of help from reaching out to other people. And you just be like, wow, that that's, that's a weight off my shoulder. And it's sometimes we, we got a lot of stress or whatever. The doctor tell us to do stuff. We don't want to do it. I know food is good. I know it is good. It's real good. But <laughs> But you still, um, when the doctor tell us to do stuff or try to back away from some things, we have to do it. Especially if you're trying to be here for a long period of time with your, with your family and your, and your grandkids and your great-grandkids and all of that. You're going to have to, you know, do what you got to do. But stop, you know, I can't say stop stressing. Do your best not to stress. I know it's a lot that's causing you because you feel like if I go in this store, I may get this virus. If I go over here, I may get it. I don't know how many people in here have it. So you stress because you're one of them kind of people that's stressed out about it. Or if you go, you know, you try to make sure your income is straight. You try to make sure that the kids and your family is good. You, if you still, your parents are still alive, you're still talking about, you know, taking care of them. If you're going through whatever, it's a lot on your work. All of that kind of stuff, it, come, it plays a part in all of that. And then you're, you're feeling, you know some type of way and it can have you all it have you stressed and um we don't want people to feel like you have to to be don't don't let things that you can have help with stress you out and if something can help you somebody can help you to get your mental state under control get it in check that'll help you out a bit you know it'll help you out for the long run you could just okay let me do these steps with my psychologist told me. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the, the people that are down there probably need to be the main ones that need to be there. I'm just saying. Ain't talking about nobody. I'm just saying. These sometimes, again, we don't want to recognize that we need help. We don't want to recognize that we need assistance in no type of way. Especially if you're talking about going to go see a psychologist. Why would I go and see a, You never know. You never know how that could be helpful to you. You never know how people they're canceling. People don't like to go and see what no, I don't want to go and see what no I ain't nothing wrong with it. But you don't realize and, and when that counseling pull out what they <coughs> excuse me, what's going on with you, then you looking like, oh, well, no, you thought this wasn't no good idea. You thought it was something that it wouldn't be helpful to you. You never know. And it don't have to be that you married to have to go to counseling. It don't have to be that you uh, it's for you because you're trying to get your you could you could take your kids you could take your family or whatever and because sometimes you just have to get things to be in order and to be on the same page and there's nothing wrong with recognizing that you need help that you need assistance that you need somebody to come in and just give you that that reality check and say hey listen stop drop that leave that alone um de-stress yourself because you're stressing out all this, especially over I say y'all like you know I said all the time don't stress yourself out over things that you cannot change that you cannot you can't I'm gonna reach out your comments in a second guys they whisper I think I don't know if somebody else did I can't I can't see it but you're gonna have to um it's okay you you can tell somebody that I need help or that I need assistance but you don't have to um be afraid to just step up there and just say that because you know a lot of times they they stress relieving that stuff and putting that stuff down and especially stuff you cannot change you can't change people you can't change their ways you can't make them do nothing that's why i said if you if if you feel like they not doing what you want them to do they not changing what the way you want them to change or anything like that change change you change you you don't have to wait and, and try to change somebody they're not gonna do what you want they're gonna do what you say you don't have to be around nobody nobody wants to if you tell somebody i don't like the way you're making me feel i don't like what you said to me and you keep doing it i've told you this before but you keep doing the same thing 
I keep telling you, I'm not, I can't keep t allowing you to say those things to me or treat me that way. So, um, I'm gonna back off of you for a while. I mean, let me, let me back off of you for a minute because I want to, I got to keep my sanity. I got to keep, uh, my head together. And I feel like this is not going to be a good situation for you and I, if I keep allowing you to talk or do whatever you want to, to me, I don't like this feeling. So in order for me to change me and change up the way that this is going, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and remove myself from you. You don't have to be around. That's why I told y'all the other day. You do not have to be around people that that um, keep mistreating you, keep hurting you, keep allowing them to keep doing stuff to you, and you don't have to. No, you don't have to accept that. Change that. If you they don't want to change hurting you and saying stuff to you, remove yourself. You ain't got to accept that. Don't accept what somebody just throwing out there to you because that's what, that's what they want to do. You're going to take what I did, y'all. Oh, okay. Well, dismiss me. You don't have to worry about me coming there. It's family included. I don't care if it's if I'm sorry, mama, daddy, sister, brother, cousin. You don't ever let nobody just walk all over you or say what they want to to you or use you up. You, come on, don't let nobody do that to you. If you feel like that's a part of something, you can dismiss yourself from that. You can remove yourself. They don't want to. They like what they're doing. They think it's funny or they think it's cool or they think it's okay. You're going to keep accepting it and that's the way it's going to be. Remove you. You ain't got to take that from them. Remove you. Move yourself from that, and you go on and do what you got to do. Sometimes, and I, you know, like I said, that uh, the seasons change. We, we're going through a, a change of season, and I know time ch changes over the weekend. Um, Saturday night, Sunday morning, or well, actually Sunday morning. Um, but you got that happening. You got, but so why can't um, people that, that's not supposed to be in this season with you, it's time for them to be released? It's okay. Does it hurt? Absolutely. Do does it bother you? Absolutely. But sometimes it's time for a season. If you don't see that you you're in need of that that um, that person anymore, you're not in need of that love. You that love that they're giving you is just not genuine anymore. It's, it's sometimes it's just time for you to re just release people from 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 all of that. Like let me let me help you release. And I told you I had to do it. And. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I had to do it. I was going to say something else, but I had to do it. But sometimes it, it's best for us to do things like that. So you keep your sanity. The, the, it, it, listen, the most inexpensive, one of the most inexpensive things you can ever have is your peace. Like, if it costs you way too much, if it costs you to be stressed out, to be uh, hurt, to be uh, done away, like, listen dismiss that costs too much okay because now you got me stressed out now you got me taking all this medication now you got me people thinking i'm crazy because i got a purse full of pills a bag full of pills and i'm going to the doctor every week for all of this stuff because i keep letting you do this to me it's a no for me like i gotta let you go it's time for you to release yourself and because you won't do it and i've asked you to i'm gonna release myself so you don't have to invite me to anything else you ain't got to show me you ain't got to send me no more text messages we can still be i'll still speak to you but all of that extra stuff that we were doing, I got to cut it short because I cannot be, I can't keep my, I'm losing my sanity. I'm taking pills. It's behind you. And that costs me too much money because now I got to keep paying for prescriptions and I'm not going to keep doing it. So guess what? <laughs> you got to go. Like you got to go. And it's okay. Pray about it. Definitely. You know, I always tell you to pray about it. Give it to the Lord. He's, he'll definitely work it out. And he'll tell you, he'll give you the things to do, the tools to do. And how to handle it and what to do. You you pray about it. If that's something sincerely that's bothering you and you feel a health change in you, you need to be, don't let nobody change your health like that. If you go to let it be be yourself. I want I want my health to change. Let me keep eating what I keep eating. Let me keep doing what I keep doing. Let it be me if my health is gonna change. But if it's not gonna change, if it's changing because of you, oh yeah, I gotta let you go. I gotta release you. I gotta pull away from you. I gotta let you go. Because I can't. I keep having spots and stuff in my face all these bumps in my face and I can't keep you know trying to figure out why am I not gaining weight or why am I look why my skin so dry why am I going through all this on top of all this medication with all these side effects it's just too much going on so yeah I gotta let you go it's okay release remove let it go <laughs> 
let it go. You can read, you can start over with new friends. And I'm telling you, when that transition happens, God start putting new people in your um, in your atmosphere. He puts new people in your circle, and it's bigger and better than what you had before. Folks love you differently than what you've seen before. You're just like, wow, I didn't even know nobody loved me like that. Like you knew people loved you, but it's a different type of love when you actually see the love that people give to you. And folks don't. I say it all the time. Folks don't have to be nice to you. But when folks are, be grateful when folks is nice to you because you got, you know, you got some mean people out here. You got, you definitely got some mean people out here. But um, you just want to make sure that um, don't don't stress yourself out behind, especially people you can't control or things you can't you can't do um, anything about. You have to keep, you know. Again, you don't feel you don't like the way you feeling when somebody talking and doing stuff to you. Let them go. Came back this morning. Come on, Miss Felicia. I just read it. I'm in the wrong lane. Listen, I got excited. I don't even care. I'm sorry. I got loud. Podcast listeners, I don't, I got. A, I, I finally read her comment. She said, "COVID nineteen test came back this morning and it was negative." Look at God. Listen, I'm loud. My daughter always say, "Mama, you be loud." Yes, I do. When it's for Jesus, I'm so excited. Look at God. Yes. Listen, I will raise my, I can't go past here, but I'm excited, Miss Fully. Look at God. You see how God be working in my Listen, he didn't, you didn't even have to wear it when you went and took your test. You already knew that it was going to be negative, but you just had to get that confirmation. He already confirmed it before you, before your test came back. He already said you didn't have it, but he had to go on and put it on paper. Hey, Miss Rachel, how are you guys? Stay whisper. Listen, I'm all in the wrong lane. Listen. Good Lord, that's all right. We can go another way. We ain't stressing out behind that. We don't stress out behind stuff. Listen, I am so excited. Look at God. Come on now. Yes, I'm excited. Yeah. Y'all was still falling back here, I guess. <laughs> I'm excited, Miss Felicia. Yes. I didn't even read the other comments before I started moving, y'all. So give me a second. I'm going to read them in the in a minute. I get when I seen that negative with Miss Listen. I got excited. Got my heart beating fast. That's all right, but it's excitement. Cause I'm just like, ah, I'm in the car right now. I can't I can't do nothing about it. But look at God. I'm so excited. Look at God. You know. Excuse me. The devil is already defeated. He's already defeated. He can't do nothing. He can't touch what's already belong to the Lord. He can't touch it. He gonna try. He gonna try to do something to you. He gonna try to hurt you. He gonna try to come for you. He trying to see. Listen, you already put your trust in God. Look at here, little baby. Ooh, I didn't see you because I was finna come. Come on, baby. I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. I can. No, I can't. You flew out of nowhere. Jesus. Listen. Come on. I'm so excited for you. Look at God. Oh, yeah. 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 This, listen. I have released myself from some people in my life since March. Listen. This was a great season for that. I w- You know what? I'm going to see if I could do. I ain't going to put it out there because, you know, when I say stuff, I, you know, I see, you know. Let me just say I'm a whole dude what I'm trying to do. Mm, Cause that's gonna say too much if I say that. <laughs> Listen, uh, come on, get that bend out your bow. I can't do mine, but I'm happy for you. I'm excited with you. Know that. I know the folks on podcast is like, it's something wrong with that girl. It absolutely is. I get excited when God is working in other people's lives as well. It ain't just me. He he don't just touch just people. You know. Anybody, when you listen, you take us because some people don't took a test and it came back positive. They were scared the whole time. You took it because you just had to do it for whatever reason it had to be done. But you already put your trust in the Lord. He already worked that thing out. And you got listen. All right, listen. I'm gonna need y'all to let me go. I'm gonna need y'all to let me go. I got to get out of here. I got to move around. It's too many people coming. Come on here, good, good honey. Come on, baby. Ain't nobody coming. Come on. You got me out here about to get. Ooh, it's some more calls coming. Oh, Jesus. Hold on, little call. Hold on, mother. Put your telephone down for a second. 
Lord Jesus, because I got in the wrong lane a while ago. I don't mind. You did? I don't miss Rachel, but you okay? Are you okay? Come on, good baby, because we out. Come on. Listen, I'm up here trying to... How you feeling, Miss Rachel? Look at God, it's so good. But when you said... When you said had, though, that's past tense. That means you healed. <laughs> Listen! Okay, I'm trying not to get too ahead. But we excited, Miss Rachel. You got through that. You got through that. We excited. Yes, I'm loud. Absolutely. You, you said had, which means you got through it. You overcame it. Listen, that storm you was in, you went straight on through there. You had to go through a little something, something, but that's all right. God got you right on through there. You had. <laughs> Past sense, honey. Past sense. Girl, listen. Let me get where I'm supposed to be going. Y'all, I'm going to turn this air up. I don't got excited. I don't got real excited. Look at God just working things out for us. I'm so excited for the work he's doing and with other people. You got a testimony. That is a testimony. Listen, it's a testimony. God has been too good to all of us. It could be any of us that have it. And you know, I've heard people that have had it multiple times. Multiple times. So, you know, I asked that question a few months ago. I asked that if you get it once, can you get it again? And I guess that's confirmation because I've known a few people to get it a couple of times um, after they got it the first time. So, yeah, they was like, yeah, 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 once you get it before, you can get it again. And I was like, wow, I didn't even know. Whew. All I need too loud to give God praise. Listen, you got to give God praise when he take you whoo, from something that people are dying, dying from by the thousands. And, and we gonna be closed-mouthed? Girl! Listen. Listen. They better be glad I'm in the hero. Hold on, y'all. 